All right, guys, if you're struggling to qualify or you're struggling in FC25, especially if you people keep telling me every day I'm in the lead division last year, the truth is, I'm going to be brutally honest here, but I'm saying this so you improve. People who have not got the fundamentals are struggling the most, okay? I'm going to give you an example, okay? It's not just about L1 trigger. I'm sure you heard me a million times saying L1 trigger. The problem is, is that everyone is waiting for AI to make this movement, okay? Forget this FC roll system, okay? Think of FC rolls as out of possession, the players going in the correct position. In possession, you should be doing L1 triggers, triggering the players to make runs, and people keep saying, oh, I'm doing it, but are you actually doing it at the right place at the right time? You can see Sun over here has got no movement. You can see, look, I press the L1 button, then Sun leaves the defender, and that gives me the gap where I can then time the pass Sun. Even if I don't want to pass the ball to Sun, as an example, I am making the movement myself. Now, this is why I'm saying people who are not doing the bases this year, they're getting outed out because they're not doing the bases correctly. And that's the elite players that are struggling. Now, left stick movement, okay? There's something I want to explain to you, okay? That video that I released yesterday, it was a tactical video. Number one, I really, I don't want you to mechanic abuse per se, but everyone is using it. And because left stick is so clunky, you kind of have no choice. Number two, um, being in maybe the position of power that I do have, the the better, the quicker that gets um, released, well, the quicker everyone uses it, the quicker it gets um, uh, nerfed, should I say. But I wanted to go over this um, dribbling, okay? Now, this is a big issue that I'm finding. Now, what my key advice for dribbling is, is that when you're dribbling, like you can see, look at my opponent here, okay? You can see, gets the ball, turns away. Now, last year, you could get away, for example, with turning. So let's say, for example, in this specific example we're talking about, right? Last year, you can get away with turning. Well, actually, have a little guess where you're turning here. Um, but, but if you said anywhere around three o'clock, you're correct, or maybe even to be precise, two o'clock, Last year, you can get away with turning like this. You see when you're when the defender is... See, if the defender was on this side, then you would turn upwards. But because the defender is a bit on the left, um, I have that kind of free space. And I'll turn before my opponent can come in close. By the way, just ignore the circle button. My circle is too making tape from the example. Just ignore the controls for a second. But you can see my opponent. Look what they do. They don't take a touch forward and they lose the ball. This year, you have to be more safer with your left stick touches because a left stick is not responsive. So when you're trying to take that touch, you've got to be so careful about where you take your touch when you're positioned to play. Have a look at this in the same example here, right? You see my opponent moves the ball going forward, got time and space on a ball, right? Does a little ball roll, gets the ball with Bellingham. Now you can see, for example, like here, makes the pass, right? Now in Kunku, my player is thinking, oh, I can then turn backwards and then turn around and take the player. But you can see this year, by the time you turn, you can't make that turn. So my advice is when you're left at dribbling, do not try to make these 45 degree angle turns. Try to make it 90 degrees. The more wider you go, the more safer you're going to be. I think until we find it, this is why people are using the speed boost right now. It's because you can't do these movements. Another advice I'll give you is tapping the R1 button using controlled sprint um, to sometimes, I've made, made a video on this yesterday, but to turn around in those zones. Otherwise, if not, if you're in a situation, just pass the ball backwards. Don't take your risk. The last thing you want to do is turn over a position like this, lose the ball in your own half, because this is where most goals get conceded is when your defense is out of position. For example, like here, it's when your defense and you now have a 4v4. So this is where most of the goals, we move a camera for a second so you can see what's going on. This is where most of the goals are getting conceded right now. And people keep telling me, oh, I'm struggling so much in qualifiers. You have to play slow. Now, this game is slow, okay? It is really, really slow, right? So I'm just going to show you just a couple of um, a couple of moves, right? So if you, do, you don't have to go for, let's say, the slow type of play, you can play a bit direct. So you can see, for example, like here, I get the ball here. Now, you can look at the controls now. I get the ball with De Jong, right? I pass the ball to Neymar, and you can see I take a touch on the right-hand side because there's space available. Had someone been over here, I would not take a touch there. But that's the thing. You have to know when to take a touch forward and when to take a touch backwards. My rule is, if it's not safe, you take a touch backwards every time. The only way you can take a touch going forward is, like, let's say you're on a final third or in a box, and it's a risk worth taking. Otherwise, look at my defense, out of position. If my opponent gets the ball here, does it pass there, driven pass, or even a lob through ball. I'm going to get taken. It doesn't matter how good I am. Even if this is why I say defenders with 99 sprint speed, use them. Use fast defenders because the faster the defender is, the more recovery time you have. So this is what I'm trying to say. You've got to be safe. And you can see, look, here in this situation, my opponent comes towards me. You see, I don't even take a risk. I keep it so safe. Does that mean I might lose opportunity? Yes, I could on the L1 triangle as well. But you can see, look, here, I wait for my opponent to overcommit. 
Then I got upwards and have a look at that. You see that that key point over there? Just have a look. Just that I'm waiting for Batcha. And here I'm using my four triple two that I released, by the way. Just have a look just at this point, just over here. I make the pass, do a one, two. So Neymar makes that run into space. Yeah. Neymar's making that run, but what see what's they're doing behind the camera? Look. Look, not that 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 player is also getting dragged away. And what's that, what's that done is created space for Rodrigo in the middle, okay? Very, very important. I'm going to show you again, okay? So have a look at Neymar, right? So we're going to get the ball. We get the ball to Neymar, okay? I do a one-two backwards. Very, the most important thing. Even if it means nothing, do that one-two backwards, okay? Neymar then goes into the pocket of space. This player has to stay like here. Otherwise, because that, that player is committed forward. And that's created space now for Rodrigo that I can pass the ball to if I wanted to, okay? I didn't pass the ball to Rodrigo. Neymar comes back on side, but that allows this transition to play happen and I go with finesses. By the way, finesses are still very, very OP this year, but that's just an example of what I wanted to say is movement. So force the one twos, force the L1 triggers. So those, so those movements happen inside the game. Don't wait. I'm gonna show you another example here. This is a, the replay of it, right? Um, this is actually not, let's show you a better example actually. We're going to show you now a better example, right? This is a more of a, a shot that I missed. Have a look at this one. We get the ball with Caddy Ogley, right? Again, same thing. We make the pass. You see, there's no movement. You see the ball with, look at Tanali over there. Look, just have a look at him. Or wherever that is. I think it's Tanali anyway. He's just standing there. I want Tanali to run into the space. I'm always pressing L, but I'm not relying on rolls. I'm not relying on a play to be box to box. I'm commanding him. I'm saying, you make that run. I make the L1 trigger. Now that's made a passing option. Remember, people always tell you, to create space, you should add. You should, tell, you should press R1 to bring someone close to you. I don't. I don't believe it. To make space, you want a player to go away from you. Like kind of the Johan Cruyff approach. Players that go away create space because then also if a player comes close, if your opponent's got high pressure, the opponent's gonna come with the player and provide more pressure. But a player that goes away, you're providing an outlet. So you can see like here, I've now created the angle. Now you see. I've now created a 2v2. Now, let's say, for example, I didn't trigger Tanali. Let's just go back and let's say, okay, I didn't trigger Tanali, right? What would have happened is I would have got the ball to Tanali's feet and I would have done a pass like this and my opponent would have probably attracted back here and maybe could have applied teammate contain with that player. But I triggered that player early and I make that triangle. You see, I created, I used a third player. Triangle very easily to go around the player like so, okay? Now I can create a 44. Now you see Son as well. Even though at this point, Son is on a poacher, by the way. You can see Son is not, do, uh, do I want Son to be there? No, this guy should be running like this on the line. Now, we know AI attack is not good. So you see, I pressed the arrow, but I'm saying, Son, you make that run. Even if the run is pointless, I'm saying, Son, you make that run. And even, you can see, look here, that's all about timing. Maybe I could have made the pass. I don't know why I didn't. I probably should have done L1 triangle at that point. So I do a one, two again. Tonali makes a run. And then you can see, look, Tonali just about offside. I realize I can't do it. Now, you see this? See, I don't take the touch forward here. So I take the touch backwards, keeping the ball safe, okay? Then rotating the ball. This, If you watch, for example, even Man City today, right? Newcastle defending deep, or even against Arsenal. Recycling the ball is part of the game. You can't just expect to get the ball in one half and then counter. As the game is slower this year, you're going to be expecting more recycling. You say, get the ball over here with Guti, right? End up then making the pass to Swanson. Then I do the bit of the speed boost, try to get into the area. And then I hold up a little bit, create myself the angle. Then I speed boost into the area, and because Swanson hasn't got a finisher chemistry style on her, her finishing's only 83, she ended up missing that chance. Now, should she have missed that? No. Um, of course, she should have scored it, but we know how it is this year. Um, another, another example I wanted to give you is this, this one over here, right? So you can see, like, my opponent here is building up. You can see, look, me being conservative with my, with my CDMs. I make a mistake. I'm winning, maybe overconfident. You can see, now I realize I'm in trouble. I switch early. Now, you can see here, watch this. See, I go back to the goalkeeper. I don't try to take a risk. Even if I'm at 2-0 here, don't, don't make it 2-1. Wait for the ball to come through. You see this? Look, switch to the player. Realize I'm in trouble. I switch early. I run back. I don't play upwards because if this player goes and gets the ball, I'm in trouble. So you can see I pass the ball backwards to the goalkeeper. That's fine. Reset the play. Okay. Then you can see on a radar, I'm looking at the bottom of the screen. I can see there's a player available and I end up making the pass. Okay. Then I do what, what I do an L1 trigger. I do a 1-2. Okay. Then Tanali has the ball. Now you can see that player in the middle. See that player just over there making that run, right? 
Then I got Batcher making a run. She's an attacking fullback on my four triple two formation. Okay. Now Batcher's making a run. It's all about timing. This is up to me. This is the key with through balls. It's not about, oh, why is my players not making runs? You got to trigger the run yourself. Wait for the through ball. Then you make the pass yourself. Then when I make the pass in, you can see with Batcher, I tried to get the pass. I'm, as you can see, that player is onside. I should have probably done a driven pass here, but ended up going with a driven cross. I was testing things out and ended up unfortunately missing and ended up scoring a goal. But you can see a lot of those things wouldn't have happened if, for example, I didn't go back to the goalkeeper because by going back to the goalkeeper here, it made the attackers come forward. So watch this, watch this. If I played this forward here, I could have got myself into a lot of pressure. And you can see, look at my players. My players are not even in front of my opponents. See, look at my strikers. They're behind. I need to be in front. So you can see, look at the radar. Head of the ball backwards. Strikers, they move forward. My players, who are strikers, they are now moving on the inside. So now I can pass the ball to them. So now I can pass the ball to them. And then you can get the situation, for example, like here. So now, then they're free. And then I can pass the ball to them. So do you see, it's all about timing. This is why the basics are so, so important. If you're, if you're going to take that risk, you've got to make sure it's perfect. Like you can see, for example, like here, right? another example, right? Get the ball with De Jong, right? Get the ball with Tonali. Left stick, you see him keeping it safe. If I know I can't get it forward, I'm not rushing it. I do an L1 triangle because there's space available. I get the ball with De Jong, okay? Now, De Jong, I can see that player, but you can see, look, no movement. Have a look at this. No movement. No movement. But if I want to, I can always treat that player. But I see if I make a trigger here, that player might run offside. So I do the L1 triangle early. I don't trigger this time. I just do an L1 triangle. Get a bit lucky, to be honest. The ball should have probably gone away. Do a one-two, and then Son is able to do a green near near time near post shot um, because my opponent was smart enough to move the goalkeeper, and I tried to outsmart them. So this is the, all the things that you have to bear in mind. These are all the small things. Have a look at this one, right? This is an example of bad defending, right? So you can see, look here. Not this is not me bad defending my opponent, rather. Um, bit of a risky, risque approach to defending here for myself, but more manual defending. That's why I got away with it. I bring the ball going forward. Note. When I pass the ball to Tonali, it's the last sample I'm going to show you, right? Note, when I make the pass to Tonali just over here, right? So, do you see the crop camera angle? I can see everything. I can only take this risk because if this player was over here, no chance of taking the pass. But the player is far away. And look how much, so even if this player decides to take a heavy touch going forward, I know I've got space available, okay? That's the key, the space available. Then I can take a risky first time pass. Then I take a touch and then you can see, look, I'm looking at the radar and I can see there's a player going forward. Then I get a bit lucky, the ball goes. You can see, look, sun's touch, not the best. You can see, take a touch, go inwards and make the pass going upwards. Now you see with Batcher, I know it's got, sorry, Swanson, I know it's going to be difficult to beat that player. So you see how I take a touch away. I don't, see a lot of people try to beat this player here. No, no, no. You use the extra player. Do a one, two. I take a touch backwards. Do a one, two. Now we're over. I got to wait for Swanson to make that run. She'll make that run. But in the meantime, that's opened up a chance. I was going to pass the ball to Sun and my opponent. You can see runs out. Remember I said you don't run out with your center backs? Perfect example of why you don't run out with your center backs. And then I'm getting the ball with Kananji. And it's all about timing here and waiting for my opponent to move the goalkeeper. Um, how I knew that, I just anticipated it. It depends what division you are in. Division 10, no one's going to move the goalkeeper. Once you're in a higher division, division four and above, people are then going to start moving the goalkeepers. So that's just a few examples. In fact, let me just show you one more final example, actually. Let's see if I can find a good one over here. Um, we're going to go for one. Okay, this is actually an interesting one. Timing of passes, right? So you can see, for example, like here, look, I get the, I lost, lost the ball here. The ball's in the air. Bit unlucky, right? So you can see, look, I'm running back. Try to intercept the pass. Get a bit unlucky. Be aggressive. Again, don't be aggressive. Um, I'm just showing you this example because once you get to a higher level, you can start being aggressive. That's why you got to keep the basics first. Learn how to drive an automatic car first before you learn to drive manual if you're struggling to drive a car already. It's my ideology. But I know when to switch players. You see, I know when to pass responsibility around. I made a slide tackle. I, I knew in the top of my head, I knew when this pass was being made. I knew Van der Ven was quick. And I knew, even if that pass went through, I knew Van der Ven as the inside angle and I can get to the ball before my opponent. Again, that's game knowledge, right? Then I get the ball with Batcher. You see, look here. I can see I make a pass. Now, I go forward because I see that space available. Now, this I would not recommend doing. The only reason why, maybe this is not a good example. Maybe this is not, not the best of examples to show you. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I know my opponent has ran this way. And I know from playing this game, when opponents run this way, in the animation, by the time it turns, by the time my opponent turns around, I'll be gone. 
That's the only reason why I got away with it. You can see, and batch is quick enough, okay? Then you can see I released the ball. You see, I know my opponent's catching. I don't try to outrun my opponent. I'm not stupid. With the ball, you're going to be slower. I make a pass, okay? Get the ball with Neymar, right? Then you can see I do a one, two. I get the ball with Rodrigo, right? Now I'm waiting, 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 wait. I slot, let go of the run button. I take a cut inside. I want to make that gap inside. But you see, if I make this through ball now, my opponent's going to catch it out easy. So I got to wait. I got to wait for the moment up until he's just about to be offside, right? Got to wait, got to wait, got to wait. Then I saw the gap and I made the pass, okay? The reason I made the pass in that gap is because that play is closing down. The longer I took the trouble I would have been, so I took a risk there. And you see I got the ball with Tonali. Then you can see I just waited, waited, then ended up passing the ball to Sun and then taking a the shot. So what I wanted to show you is examples here. It's all about the fundamentals. I'm not doing any specific skill moves here. I'm just timing it, doing one twos, but keeping the ball safe, not taking any risks. Anyway, maybe this is not the best video to show you in terms of examples per se and explaining it, but I hope this gave you an explanation of do the basics, okay? Re don't rely on a game. Don't rely on foot IQ. Don't rely on tactics. Don't rely on anything. Do you think the pro players are relying on Roll++ plus plus and Bappe to make a run? No. They're doing a player lock themselves. Right, you want, let me show you a player lock example. Let me just extend this video. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go ahead and show you a player lock example, okay? Like for example, they're not, they're not, these top tier players, they're not waiting for the game to, to do anything for them. Again, don't use, um, so you can see like here, good play from my opponent. I get the ball back. You see with De Jong, see, look, I take a touch away safely. See, don't take a risk, pass the ball down, right? You can see, look, I can see at the bottom, bottom right, there's a player that I do a player lock and I make that movement myself. Then I request the ball, right? Then you can see I take a touch inwards and then you can see I'd hit, I do driven pass. Lavelle's got a ping play style. And then here, probably, I should have probably just shot. I went near post because my opponent, I was thinking, is probably going to go a cross goal there. And I probably should have done better, to be honest. But that's just an example of, like, player lock. You see, I'm, you don't, wait for the, don't wait for the game to make decisions for you. Like, say, have a look, for example, like, here, this is an example of me doing a skill move. Just ignore this. I should have probably finished that better. Nice goal there in the end. Um, but, like, have a look, for example, like, here, you see, when I get the ball, see that heavy touch? That's the only reason why I was aggressive with my centre-back. Slide tackle, win the ball. Get the ball, Patrick, first time pass, because again, the space available. Then you can see when I get the ball, watch with, with Neymar. I try, look see, look, see, look what I do here. Very, very important, right? Even though I'm going to do a player lock, I still trigger the player with the L1 button, so they start making runs. See that? Even, bef even though I'm going to do a player lock anyway, just to give myself a second advantage, I do an L1 trigger. Then you can see, look, player lock, go down with Rodrigo. Then I go back up again, do a bit of a trickaroo. And then I time it to perfection. You see that? Don't hold the run button. Look at peripheral vision. And I make the pot just before he's offside. So when it releases, I get the ball with Sun. And this time I wait for the goalkeeper to step out. And that way I get the goal. So look, what I'm trying to say to you is all about the basics, okay? The fundamentals are so, so important. Check out some other videos. You can also look at other videos on my old channel. If you really want to learn about the fundamentals and also football IQ, not just the basics of FC, Come to my Patreon, so it's patreon.com forward slash no guys. Don't get bad after one month to refund your money. We also go over real life examples and how to prove your football IQ is in general. Or you can click here. And if you want to see more information from FC School Series, um, don't forget, if you don't get bad after one month, we refund your money. So no guys, guarantee. Hope this video did help. A uh, bit of a late one, um, seven o'clock. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.